Internally, the development was codenamed D5. The D describes a segment of large sedans, and the 5 represents the fifth Audi model in this segment. The very first of these models was the Audi V8 from 1988, when the manufacturers from Ingolstadt just set off for the luxury segment. The V8 was followed by the first A8 with its famous aluminium space frame, the world's first mass-produced vehicle with a self-supporting aluminium body. Lightweight construction was also in the focus of the current A8. However, the demands on the body have increased considerably, as it must be able to accommodate several batteries and a full hybrid drive. In addition, the requirements for comfort and occupant protection also increased. Audi therefore decided to develop a body structure made of several materials with differing thicknesses. Combining such a multitude of materials with each other is an immense challenge during production. We want to put the right material in the right place. As a result, we chose a multi-material body construction with steel, aluminum and carbon, with the challenge of joining all these different materials together. This poses much more of a challenge than with conventional cars that are made of steel only. should be a complete revolution. Especially in the luxury segment, a lot can only be achieved through the human factor that senses it. The A8 must radiate prestige. That's utterly important to me. Does what we decided two or three years ago actually fit into today's world? And will the customers accept it the way we want it to be? The developers spent more than four years on this project, an enormous task as the A8 was created in a time of probably the greatest upheaval for the company. Digitization, electrification and piloted driving are only three buzzwords that shape this period of time. Never before had so many new systems been integrated into a car and the A8 must set standards in each field. The challenges are enormous. For the first time, the ZFAS, a central computer, is used to control many of the car's electronic functions. In addition, there's an active chassis that permanently scans the road with the help of the front camera, and in fractions of a second, adjusts the spring damper system accordingly, also thanks to the 48-volt power system. A steering system that is both connected to the front and rear axles, a hybrid drive that supports the engine, and much more. All these systems had to be developed, made ready for series production and tested throughout millions of kilometers. It was an enormous task at extremely high standards for the entire development team. There are so many technical tidbits it would take too long to list them. The car is prepared for pilot list driving, level three, 
and a chassis which includes EABC. It's basically an active chassis with air suspension and the first of its kind in the world. For Audi, the A8 represents the dawn of a new era for the automobile, and the form is intended to instantly show this via its design. Mark Lichter was in charge of this task. Since 2014, he's been Audi's head designer. Right on my first day when I started at Audi in February 2014, the decision about the A8 was made. On my second working day, I explained my strategy directly to the management board. There were five design models, one of which I had already done with a small team of people in Wolfsburg, and there were four alternative models that were done in Ingolstadt. These four models have been developed in a year, and I had to come up with a design model in a very restricted time period. In the end, I was able to convince the management board with my design because it represented the contents of the strategy and the brand values best. There's still a lot to do, especially on a functional level, because the new A8 is a vehicle that is mainly shaped by software. It includes many different features. We're still hard at work, and there's some way to go, but I'm convinced that we will manage. Ingolstadt at the end of 2015. The design team completed its task. The new Audi shape has been approved by the management board. This one on one clay model allows the designers to view their design in 3D for the first time. This clay model accompanies us in our development process for about one and a half years. And the final model, the so-called design freeze model, is then made of plastic. Despite the computer animations, a model is an important tool in order to determine the design. It can be changed again and again during the design process, either by machine or by hand. The manual modeler focuses on translating the designer's two-dimensional sketch to a three-dimensional model in order to bring the designer's idea to life. Automotive design is also a competition, where at the end of the day, only one of the designs wins. Philip Römers and his team won the contract for the A8. Together with Mark Lichter, he went from Volkswagen to Audi. Of course, it's great to see how such a design develops from sketch to model to an actual car. And it's also great to see a car with our design driving around one day. That's something very special. Once a design has been approved, it is then refined. Despite all the digital tools, this is still done by drawing lines by hand and with the sensory experience with the model. The new Audi flagship is not only the evolution of the A8 model line, it also introduces a new design language that will characterize the models to come. It's a demanding task Mark Lichter and his team have to master. At the same time, in the Audi plant in Neckersulm, in the so-called pre-series center, employees are building the first prototypes. What will later be fully automated during series production is done manually here. For the first time, the body is manufactured by a composite construction. Here, it has to be proven if what the engineers developed on their computers can actually be built. Steel, aluminium, magnesium and a carbon back wall must be joined together. Welding, screwing, riveting, gluing, all the joining technology available today is used in the new A8. Audi has a lot of experience with bodies that are made of different materials, but for the A8 many of these techniques are used for the first time. This wheelhouse is a good example for the various joining techniques. Steel can be joined with steel using the oldest and cheapest method, resistance spot welding. Inside the cavity, where it can't be reached from behind, it is screwed together with so-called flow drill screws. There's also riveting, which you can see here. This process doesn't require heat and therefore doesn't warp the material. Lapland in winter 2015.
car manufacturers are testing numerous aspects with their new vehicles at temperatures as low as minus 30 degrees Celsius. It looks like a lot of fun, and it really is. But beyond all that, the four-wheel drive of the A8 is being tested. At 7 o'clock in the morning, Ferdinand Hartinger and his team configure the car systems in the garage. After that, the prototype has to drive in the icy desert and prove that its complex technology works perfectly, even under these extreme conditions. And how does it feel when you count the steer? The rear seems quite stable. The steering parameters are adjusted repeatedly until the developers are happy with the result. Our customers will be surprised by the maneuverability of the vehicle. It doesn't feel as if they were sitting in such a big car, but it gives them the agility and the maneuverability of smaller vehicles. That's the great thing about it. In such situations, there is a function that turns the rear axle steering to zero so that the rear of the vehicle can be handled very precisely and predictably by the driver. Another development goal here in the far north of Europe is the perfect coordination of all driving stability systems. When does the ESC start to intervene? Does the Quattro drive react as desired? And do the systems communicate flawlessly with each other? And how do the electronic components react to the Arctic cold? The central computer alone, the ZFAS, which bundles all the software of the driver assistance systems, is uncharted territory altogether. The Arctic Circle in northern Sweden. Timo Strutz and his team are preparing the test car. For the first time, the engineers will check whether the complex electromechanical chassis works smoothly at temperatures below minus 30 degrees Celsius. The chassis and electronics of the new Audi A8 are implanted in its predecessor. This is common practice in automotive development, as the use of so-called technology carriers means that test vehicles are available at an early stage of development, and these cars do not need to undergo expensive camouflage. The car that already cooled down in the night is driving out of the garage. This lowrider show is in fact a serious inspection of the car's suspension systems. All functions of the chassis must work reliably on the test site. It may look funny when we make the car bounce, but this is a test sequence that allows us to keep the vehicle repeating the same movements. We can examine how the currents, the acoustics or dynamics change due to the cold. The chassis control of the A8 is technically very complicated. Due to the high voltage of 48 volts, the electronic components react in a flash. The front camera detects bumps at an early stage, and the chassis controls react accordingly, unnoticed by the passengers. Even wobbling movements of the car, for example in curves, are compensated by the system at lightning speed. Since each wheel is controlled individually, Audi is able to offer a feature that reduces the consequences of a side impact by raising the body on the affected side. This multitude of safety-relevant technology is tested during endless test drives in all climatic areas of the world, until everything works reliably in all conditions. In addition, the vehicle must not make any strange noises. The main purpose of this track is to detect any noise in the area of the suspension or the axles. This may be a squeaking or some kind of breathing noise from an air spring or damper, or even from our actuators. The tough day-to-day -day testing wears the developers out. Some of them are on site for up to three weeks. In the Arctic cold, where there are only four hours of daylight, they're grateful for a little diversion. There's a lot on offer here, even at night. If you don't want to relax, there are many things you can do. 
the automobile companies created their own infrastructure in Lapland. Playing ball is also part of the relaxation program during the extensive testing process. There's no sign of relaxation at the design centers though. The completion of the car's interior is running at full steam. It must be determined how this luxury car shall be operated in the time to come. This is the first time that there's a completely new operating logic behind everything. Before, everything was remote controlled, but in the new A8 we will switch to a touch-based operation. This is a new challenge for us, but we took it on with great pleasure. We had a lot of fun. It's always great for a designer to be able to do everything from scratch. And we also learned a great deal in the area of user experience. Despite the rapidly growing digitalization, classical handicraft is still in demand. With taping, I can try out proportions very effectively on a two-dimensional level. I can create tension through lines and translate everything into CAD. With this clay model called the seat box, the designers can explore the spatial effect of the surfaces. Even in our digital age, the physical impression plays an important role, especially in the luxury segment. I need a physical model in which I can sit in order to experience the spatial effect of the interior. That's something we haven't come up with in the virtual world yet, which is why I need this model. Light is more and more often used as a design tool in the interiors of cars. For us, light as a design element is the perfect means of creating ambiance. We can do this with colored light, but also with certain light elements, like this precise light that you see here, or the ambient light as we call it, with which you can make a switchboard seemingly float. In luxury cars, customers expect technical innovations and exquisite materials in connection with workmanship of the highest quality. Coming up with the right composition is the task of the color and trim department. On the one hand, fashion and zeitgeist plays a major part here. On the other hand, it's about colors and materials that must still be somehow on vogue even years later. Simona Falcinella, head designer at Color and Trim, was handed this sensory task. I really have the feeling that you can feel how many people put attention, care, professionality to, to this product and enjoy it while you're driving. Simona Falcinella and her team must feel what customers all over the world expect from an A8. A miscalculation at this point would have vital negative consequences. I would imagine uh, if the color and the material is wrong, you immediately have a feeling, a perception of being the wrong place having some kind of discomfort, maybe. Not really physical, but really feeling, perceive, perceive something like a no that is, is jumping out of, of the equation, yeah. In Audi's light channel in Ingolstadt, technicians and designers are developing the head and rear lights of the A8. In recent years, lighting has become an important stylistic aspect in automotive design. We have the same rhythm here. Perfect. Freshly developed technologies constantly provide the designers with new possibilities. One of these elements is the OLED, an extremely thin light source that's ideal for illuminating small, narrow areas. Cesar Muntada Roda and Stefan Berlitz are responsible for lighting at Audi. Our creations should be immediately recognizable on the street as part of the Audi brand, but also as to what kind of vehicle is moving towards you. The development effort is truly considerable. In order to develop such systems, we have to start years in advance. We start with basic research. We were among the first manufacturers to use OLED and our efforts were a boost for the whole automotive industry and all of a sudden it was available everywhere. 
During the development phase itself, there are a lot of tests where we have to do many test drives on the road. But here in the light channel, we can see beforehand whether the lighting fits and if all the functions go together well. This all happens before we actually do the test drives. It requires a lot of adjustments to create the ideal lighting for our customer. Of course, in the development of the A8, the customer's wishes need to be taken into consideration too. They are constantly being scrutinized in numerous studies. Our customers often prefer to drive with high beam, which is why we provide them with an ultra-modern light assistance system, matrix headlamps, where they always have high beam without actually blinding anyone. For better visibility, they get laser headlights. There is another exciting element on top that includes our light animation for the wow effect. Will the equation work here? The blazing hot Arizona desert in the USA. This is the final heat test. An advanced stage of development. The task now is to check the latest status. Will the utterly complex systems really work reliably even in this extreme heat and desert dust? At this point, we re-examine the overall functions of the vehicle, especially regarding the power drain, the air conditioning, the specific climate control levels for the U.S. market, as well as the dust ingress into the car's interior. The A8 is still camouflaged inside and out. The first presentation date is near. Nothing would be worse than exposing the car's secrets now if a spotter took pictures of the series model. All systems are working perfectly, which cannot be taken for granted, as the individual modules of the car almost brought to melting point. The extreme heat is the biggest challenge here. It leads to backups in the heat range even after the car was operated on the highway. All the components are brought to the limit. All the findings from the test drives in Arizona converge in Ingolstadt. Now the developers must quickly find solutions for the complications that occurred. Our error log shows that there was a problem with the central locking. We will check the wiring following the respective diagram and see if we can locate the error somehow. At the Audi plant in Ingolstadt, the whole world can basically be simulated. Temperatures of minus 30 to plus 55 degrees are displayed at the so-called climate roll test bench. The engineers check their systems once again. Usually a car is tested here for two weeks, the first week in warm or hot temperatures and the second week in cold temperatures. Whatever wasn't possible in the Arizona desert or the snow of the Arctic Circle is made possible here. Going 250 at 50 degrees Celsius or an ascent at minus 30. In these laboratory conditions, all components of the car can be tested extensively. I would suggest we warm up the engine now and as soon as it's warm, we start the ascent. We approach the vehicle, unlock it, start the car and drive off. We start slowly, especially in the low temperature, so that all the lubricants can get up to temperature, and then we check the heating of the air conditioning, the rear window, and windscreen heating. Everything is scrutinized very closely. The technical development of the big Audi approaches the finish line. The so-called SOP starter production is imminent. It's time for Audi Communications to order the first advertisements. May 2017 near Hamburg. Three days of shooting are scheduled for the production of the first clip. Secrecy is of the utmost importance. The most important thing on location when the car hasn't been presented yet is that it is hidden from sight because we shoot out in the open. Nobody is supposed to see the car before it is presented to the world press. This is why my colleagues tape over so much and only leave open what the camera has to see. The regulations are really strict. Audi Lander Coup. They form a cooperation with Marvel Studios and promote the A8 with the Spider-Man Homecoming movie which will be released in June 2017. 
The A8 is first shown at the film's premiere. Still camouflaged, Audi's top model is shown to the public on the red carpet. The Audi ad shows a car ride of a father with his little son. Two young actors were required in order to play the son. We must follow certain time limitations. Children aren't like adult actors. If they don't feel like doing something, they won't. And when they're tired, they're tired. And shooting with two kids like today is an additional challenge. Las Vegas in February 2017. The Audi A8 is a global car. Most parts were developed in Germany, but the car was also adapted to local requirements at the most important sales markets. In the gambler's city, the engineers have the opportunity to test another part of piloted driving. Only here, the Audi technicians can utilize the city's modern traffic infrastructure in order to test a new feature of the A8. The car communicates directly with the traffic control center. The driver receives two types of information. If the traffic light ahead of him is still red, the car will show him or her the time it takes until it's green again, or it will issue a speed recommendation with which he or she can reach the next traffic light when it's green. Of course, the system cannot prevent traffic jams, but our studies show that the flow of traffic becomes better the more vehicles have this feature on board. In Las Vegas, all surrounding areas have joined together to form a large traffic control center, and we are connected to all the 1,000 traffic lights in the region. The data from the A8 and the traffic lights converge at this control center. Brian Toft is fascinated by the possibilities of the new technology. We will use data that we get from the traffic signals to understand how the traffic's flowing and what we can do to better time the signals. We can use data that we get from vehicles to uh, also tell us how fast a vehicle can travel, how many times they have to stop, and then we can use that to better do work with the traffic signals back in Germany. According to many researchers, the future of private transport lies in highly automated driving. The so-called level three of piloted driving means that for the first time, a manufacturer is fully responsible for the system and its safety. And that, in turn, only works when the legislation greenlights this. The A8 also includes the so-called traffic jam pilot. In this mode, the car already drives quite independently with a speed of up to 60 kilometers an hour. The technology that makes this possible consists of radar, a laser scanner, cameras, and of course software that controls everything. Since these systems must work absolutely safely, comparable to the autopilot of a passenger aircraft, the individual modules are protected manifold. The developers of these systems are highly specialized and also work on the so-called remote parking pilot that shall allow the car to drive into the garage all by itself. Marcus Schwierz must have driven into this garage thousands of times. He helped develop the system. This is the remote parking pilot that allows the customers to comfortably have their car parked in the garage via their smartphone. 
We included a laser scanner that measures the garage with high precision. The customers can use any parking space, for example, across parking space or parallel to the road. This means that they can also drive past parking spaces in a normal garage or a public car park, activate the function from inside the car, and then conveniently let the vehicle park itself via smartphone. The development of the car is nearing its goal. The A8 is, of course, offered worldwide. Its most important sales market will be China. For this reason, the Ingolstadt-based manufacturer maintains its own development center in this big country, where each new Audi model is adapted to the special requirements of this market. Fuel is one of the main reasons why we are hedging in China at all. The qualities vary greatly from province to province and also from season to season. The motor withstands the mountain air without any problems. But thin air combined with poor fuel quality can lead to poor running. Therefore, every conceivable complication right up to series production must be ruled out. Here, around the Himalayas, we once again check the applications regarding the engine and transmission. How is the car's dynamics at high altitudes? Do we need to adjust the transmission or the engine tuning? Does the engine start nicely even at high altitudes and in thin air? Camouflage of the A8 makes sense even in the remotest regions of the world. Although these curious monks from a monastery near Songpan certainly won't tell. Seven thirty a.m. local time in Chengdu, China. Kurt Simmel and his colleagues are getting ready for a hard day of testing. Eight hours of traffic chaos lie ahead of the Bavarians now. It may sound strange to us Europeans, but the Chinese AA customers will drive their large sedans almost exclusively in the big cities which are extremely crowded. No wonder, as 15 million people live in Chengdu alone. At peak times, especially in the morning or evening hours, traffic here is unbearable. It takes an hour to drive five kilometers. This is not about dynamics or chassis design. In China, the same systems that we use in Europe are active, such as start-stop systems. Of course, these are in use much more frequently in city traffic. The same goes for the horn, as a car without a horn is basically unthinkable in China. Our society is changing. The digitization of many areas of our lives takes place at all levels. The big players in the digitization industry like Apple, Google or Samsung point the way ahead. For the car manufacturers this means that they need to follow suit. Customers are used to using touch surfaces on their devices in their everyday lives. So our task was that we transfer this kind of lifestyle and operation with the corresponding displays into our car, without forgetting the typical Audi virtues. The A8 follows this path consistently. Switches or levers are almost impossible to find in the interior of the A8. Instead, touchscreens take over their task. These features have existed for years, 
but for their top model, Audi have added a delicacy to their menu. When a certain force is reached, a small vibration is generated that gives the brain the feeling of pressing a button. Many A8 customers will have someone else drive them, which is why the comfort features of the limousine must also be accessible from the rear. This is done via a smartphone-shaped tool. You can operate the air conditioning or the massage functions. You can control the scent in the vehicle, the interior lighting, or the complete infotainment package that includes the radio or multimedia from all kinds of sources. But you can also make a simple telephone call. Today, the A8 graduates from high school, so to speak. Rupert Stadler, chairman of Audi's management board, personally takes the exam in his own hands. The manager asks for the status of development and also takes a close look at the control panel. Today I want to focus on the acoustics. There are still minor details here and there. If you look at the tightness of these nets, for example, these things will need to mature further during the industrialization process. I experienced the car half a year ago, a quarter of a year ago, a month ago, and now I realize it's close. The car has matured quite nicely in a way that fits. It's like a pregnancy. You can tell the baby is growing and thriving. It matures in a way where it can be judged. These moments are important to me. We need to know, does what we decided two or three years ago actually fit into today's world? And will the customers accept it the way we want it to be? I think it will be a slam dunk. I'm quite convinced of that. Our main focus was the luxury limousine segment. We want to achieve that the customers who buy such a car, and usually sit in the back, simply feel good. The seats in the previous generation models were always rather taut, and I said, friends, we have to produce the best set of seats in the world. That's what our customers expect, soft seats where they can snugly lean their heads back, feel the comfort, the warmth, it should feel utterly pleasant. It's the final phase of the A8's development. It's all about fine-tuning now. At the so-called Meisterbock in Neckersulm, the technicians ensure the quality of the individual components and assess their precision. Are all gap dimensions within the specified range, and where do improvements still need to be made? Andreas Guris's department follows all stages of development and shall ensure perfect quality up to the series production. During the usual development of a vehicle, we have to go through about five to six stages. In the case of very complex, very complicated components, as is also the case with new technologies, there can be up to ten different stages. We put a lot of energy and love into our vehicles. Especially in the interior, the demands are very high. Is wood, aluminium and leather a perfect match? Small markings indicate inaccuracies. For us, these are the working points with which we display the current improvement measures together with our colleagues and the component supplier. We say, we are not in default. We are not there as we imagine it. And they're really being worked through point by point. There are strict specifications for each component, which the suppliers must meet the high expectations only if they stand up to the scrutinizing examination of the Meisterbock team and their measuring instruments, they'll be in approval. There are clear guidelines for our suppliers which we thoroughly check here on a technical side, which means we measure everything. But we also feel it, because many things, especially in the luxury segment, can only be discerned by human beings. There's also some drastic treatment during development. At a strictly fenced-off test area near Ingolstadt, the A8 is being tortured. In just under five months, 12 years of a car's life are simulated. In the so-called Ingolstadt corrosion and aging test, 
INCA for short, the paint is scratched and sprayed with salt water. The car is driven through mud and salt puddles and bombarded with gravel several times. The D5's body consists of a complex mixture of materials. So, corrosion is a big challenge in many ways. Furthermore, the body has many components which all need to be sealed against each other, which is why the sealing concept of the D5 is very complex and elaborate. Most drivers would never do this to their cars, but the process helps the engineers to ensure quality. This shows where wear and corrosion occur prematurely. Neckers Ulm in autumn 2017. Series production of the A8 is largely automated. What started with a design draft over four years ago is now put together on a production line. This is a very special moment for me and my team because we once again can witness when technological history in automotive engineering is written. The Audi employees have come a long and exciting way. Their combined skill and passion once again proved the slogan Vorsprung durch Technik to be true. Everyone involved is proud of their joint performance. I'm excited about the vehicle. It fills me with pride. All A8s are produced for the world market in Neckarsulm. The cars that are now built here in the early stages will go to the IAA in September 2017, as well as press and marketing events. Soon after, production is in full swing, and the first customers receive their Audi A8.
Einfach 